But yes, this means that being a witch, walking the path of a witch, discovering your own magic can be a solitary path. So from my own humble experience, the path of a witch really is all about have you ever had this feeling that you would be the one that would go on a complete different path than anyone else in your family and that you would be the one to break ancestral cycles and that you would be the one to leave home in order to explore the world and experience new things and did you ever have this nudge that there is just so much more magic in this world and in yourself but in order for you to find it you just need to leave the familiar i think i always kind of knew that i would walk on a different path than anyone else i knew even though i didn't really pay attention to it back then because this inner feeling was familiar to me or maybe i couldn't quite put a name on it i was young and everything was just so distant in the future i was living in the present moment every single day but at some point i realized that my path would go a different way than anyone else's that i knew and when i was standing at this crossroads Honestly, it was hard accepting it. I felt like this one character in books where there is an undiscovered magic that suddenly appears and then nothing is as it was before. In books, this character then usually goes through a crisis, doesn't understand these new powers that come with their new self and wonders why of all the people there are in this world they have been given this fate. They then usually go on a journey in which they have to face difficult challenges, often alone. But when I learned something from all the books that I've read is that these characters, after all these challenges, they come out stronger and more empowered than ever before and they are ready to face new, even bigger challenges and they are ready to stand up for the good with this new power of theirs. I personally love the Ghibli movie Kiki's Delivery Service. So the story is like that. At the age of 13, Kiki leaves her friends and her family and her hometown, so the familiar, and it's a tradition, so she can improve her magical powers. And at the beginning, she faces all kinds of challenges. She loses trust in herself, but after a while, she has this brilliant business idea and regains confidence in herself. Sounds familiar, right? So to me, being on such a journey is what being a witch, is what being on the path of a witch has been like, to be honest. And I'm still on this journey. And I wanted to make this video because I think there are many witches out there that are on this part of the journey where they feel like they are lonely, they are alone and not belonging, lonely in doing the craft. But why do we feel lonely as witches? Why do we feel lonely in doing the craft when there is no one around us to support us? So first of all, I believe that this feeling of loneliness as a witch is a longing for what it must have been like in the past, like the residue of a memory deep inside of us. Like old stories talk about how witches met at night in groups at certain places, for example, how they flew with their brooms to the Blocksberg, right? But what if witches came together to learn? What if they met to exchange knowledge about herbs and the moon faces? What if they came together to celebrate, to dance, to sing and to heal old wounds together? So I truly believe that there must have been a time like that when witches came together and maybe they didn't call themselves witches but when they came together and they cooked and eat together, when they were dancing and singing and laughing and celebrating, doing a ritual in honor of Mother Earth on a full moon, 
And a quiet memory deep inside of us longs for this memory of belonging. So I think part of why we feel lonely is because we want to belong somewhere. We want a place where there are like-minded people and finding a place where you belong is like being put in your Hogwarts house. Let's just be real, right? We want to talk about the things we love with people we love and we want to learn. I also think that part of why we feel lonely as witches is It's just natural that we want to be seen and heard for our authentic self. So doing something that you love and having people validate your authentic self and your skills is just honestly the best feeling ever and it's just so rewarding. Think about making flower bouquets. Yes, it's nice to make it for yourself. But if you have people, for example, at a wedding and you make the flower bouquet for the wedding couple and you just know that they are going to cherish this moment and the flower bouquet forever, then that's just on another level. It just hits different, right? And of course, we feel lonely if there is just no one around us that we can share our most authentic self with, that we can dress up as witches, that we can do spells together or just talk about the things that we love, exchange knowledge. And I remember when I first started to get into magic and spirituality and astrology and tarot and all that kind of things, there was no one around me that I could share myself with. This was like 16 years ago and there was no social media. I could not openly share my thoughts like I do now. I had no platform whatsoever. And honestly, this was the most cruel feeling ever. When you feel like there is something wrong with you, like you don't belong or that you are the weird one. And I remember people telling me to get off with my head off the clouds, to be more realistic, to be more rational. And it really made me feel like that there was just something wrong with me, right? And I feel like this is also part of why we feel lonely as witches. But on the other hand, the witch wound is still present to this day, probably making it hard for a lot of witches to even make the conscious decision to share their most authentic self, to maybe join a coven or something like that. So this ancestral wounds means that women have been taught to fear their own power, especially their feminine power. The witch wound can manifest in our lives as many different fears, like the fear of being your most authentic self and speaking your truth, the fear of trusting your own intuition or being in your own feminine energy, for example. It could be the fear of being successful and standing in your own power. But it could also manifest as the fear that you feel like you are different or you are the wrong one or like you are the outcast. And the fear of calling yourself a witch even or a pagan or a priestess or whatever you identify with. And what I learned on my journey is the witch wound often in women manifests that we see women, other women as rivals And we are jealous when we see them being successful instead of cheering each other and like rooting for each other, right? So all of these things could indicate that the witch wound is still present in your life right now. Witches help others find a way to stop fearing thoughts, feelings or uncanny experiences. We guide people through dark times. But first we must walk ourselves through our own dark path. Courtney Weber But sometimes this even means that we have to go at things alone for some time. Because the path of a witch is not just about learning and discovering new spells and rituals. It's about forging a deep connection with yourself and the world around you. It's about understanding the cycles of nature and yourself and how you fit into the grand tapestry of life. But this often requires stepping away from the noise of the world and retreating into the quiet corners of your mind and the world where true wisdom resides. 
And if someone asks me what being a witch means to me, I would say that it's a constant healing. It's a constant healing of my own wounds, limiting belief patterns and ancestral wounds so that I can step into my most magical self. It's about learning to trust myself and constantly learning about my strengths and weaknesses. So to me, a modern witch is just constantly doing the necessary inner work so she can improve her magic. And I think that is something that is often overlooked. But honestly, it takes courage. It takes courage to walk this path and to maybe walk a different path than anyone else you knew expected you to go. It takes courage to say no more people pleasing and to stand up for yourself because now you know your self-worth and your strengths. And it takes courage at first, yes, but it brings freedom at the end. But yes, this means that being a witch, walking the path of a witch, discovering your own magic can be a solitary path. Not everyone will understand you or why you are doing what you are doing. Not everyone will understand the steep connection you have to the earth or to the land you live on, to nature and its cycles, its inhabitants seen and unseen, to crystals or astrology or whatever there is for you. And it can feel like the whole world is against you and no one understands you. And I have been there more times than I could count. So from my own humble experience, the path of a witch really is all about developing unshakable trust in yourself because only then will you be able to keep walking on your individual path when things get shaky. So yes, walking your path as a witch probably will be different than most of the people you know. You will have to leave the familiar in order for you to find your unique magic, whatever leaving the familiar means for you. And yes, from the witches that I met and from my own experience, I believe that walking the path of a witch means that there will be times when we feel lonely and we feel like there is something wrong with us and like we don't belong. But I just want you to know that it's part of the journey and you are not alone in this. If you're watching this, just know that I and all the other beautiful people who are watching this got your back. So now, how do you feel less lonely? Maybe right now you are at this point in your journey where you feel like you don't belong anywhere, you feel lonely in doing the craft and you are not in your Hogwarts house yet, right? And I just want to say that I think there is no receipt for everyone because everyone's journey is different. So I'm just sharing some ideas here, but of course let me know in the comments if there is any other ideas that you want to share. If you have been in a similar situation, you have been through this journey or you are right now and something helps you, make sure you share it because I'm sure this will be valuable for all the people who are watching it. So first of all, obviously try to find things or activities that give you the feeling of belonging. And I know with the online world, we can basically connect to everyone and everything with the click of a mouse. But I think what 2020 to 2022 showed us is that as a human, we need real personal connection. We need real interaction. And I just came to a point where I didn't want to be online anymore. I really wanted to connect with real people. I wanted to spend time outside of the online world. I wanted to be offline in nature. And this could be, for example, a book club in your area. It could be an herbal walk through nature. Maybe it's an astrology group. Maybe there is a shamanic practitioners group or a drum group that you could go there. And even selling stuff at a flea market or going to a flea market to buy things is a great way to meet new people. And I know as an introvert, it can be quite hard to get out there and meet new people. 
But trust me when I say, when you meet people who share your interests and who are just at your wavelength, it's so much fun. And maybe this friendship, this new friendship turns into something bigger. Maybe there is a collaboration of some kind. Maybe you meet someone through that person. So yeah, I had this many, many times where I met new people and I met people through the people who were kind of little breadcrumbs that I had to follow. And again, trust me, I know it can be hard as an introvert, but it's fun if you can talk about the things that you love. So what really helped me is to find ways so I can feel heard. And this could literally mean that you go into the forest and you talk to the trees and the wind rustling through the leaves is your answer from them because you know that they are listening to you. Or your pet, maybe it's your spirit guides, your guardian angels or whatever makes you feel heard. And I recently came to a huge crossroad in my life And I was really desperate and I felt like no one is listening to me, like no one hears me. And then sign after sign showed up that made me know. I just had this knowing that Hecate is listening. And I started to research Hecate and really get familiar with her because I could feel her presence. So instead of feeling lonely, I suddenly felt empowered and heard and really ready to choose this next chapter of my life. So you could work with DTs if they make you feel heard. And trust me when I say that if a DT wants to work with you, and I hope I'm saying DT, DT, right? Um, but when they want to work with you, they will make it clear. This is just my own experience. They will make it so clear that they have a message for you, that they want to share something with you. You cannot not see it. Trust me on that, okay? To me, feeling hurt also means to just share my magic with the world. And this could mean that you open up a YouTube channel or you start an Instagram, a blog or Pinterest or whatever resonates with you. And I know this can be scary, I have been there. But if there's something that you have been thinking about that resonates with you, just be brave because most of the times it's these things that will really open up new opportunities and new chapters in our lives. So for me, starting this YouTube channel is my way of sharing my magic and it really was the best decision I ever made. It's still a small channel, but... There are so many beautiful people connecting here and leaving comments and saying that the videos I make, they help them. Even if it's maybe only one sentence that I say, you never know. So just start sharing your art, sharing your magic with the world. If this is something that you can do safely and that makes you feel passionate. So just find ways. Maybe it's art exhibitions, maybe crafts markets. Find ways so you can share your magic and just share it with the world. Because only if you shine your light bright, you will also lead other people and they can follow your light and find their own light. So another tip that I can give you is to focus on the people and honor the people that already acknowledge you for who you truly are, who already acknowledge your most authentic self and who yeah, just see you for who you truly are. And this could be as simple as someone, even a stranger telling you that they love your voice, they love your witchy fashion style, they may love your... I don't know, dancing or singing or art, just honor these people, follow these breadcrumbs and don't focus on the people who don't get you. And I say that without any judgment. And I know this can be the hardest, especially if it's people who are close to you, who are family. Don't judge them and instead focus on the people who already see you for who you truly are and what makes you you. And this kind of resonates with the tip when people want to tell you how to manifest and they tell you only to focus on the positive and not on the negative. So again, honor the people, even if it's strangers, that already see you for who you are and just let go of any judgment why other people, maybe close people you know, don't understand you. So the next thing is to follow your gut instinct. And I think 
Developing your intuition as a witch is one of the most important things that you can do because your intuition as a witch, it's always right. So follow your gut instinct and follow that instinct, that intuition, if it tells you to leave your hometown because there is a reason that you feel like that. And I truly think that feeling lonely often comes if we don't follow our soul's purpose, our soul's urge. And yeah, maybe you are the daughter that has to leave the familiar, that has to leave her hometown, for example, if this resonates with you, and to explore the world in order to develop her magic. Maybe you need to swim in the ocean, to climb this mountain, whatever it is, and to make mistakes and yeah, just feel and experience the world in a way that no one else in your family so far ever has. So last but not least, embrace the moments of solitude. And I know it's so much easier said than done, but yeah, embrace the moments of solitude because it is in these moments that we can truly find ourselves. But we most of the time only realize that in retrospect. But of course, I want you to be safe. And if you feel like that none of these will help you or you still feel lonely, you still feel like you need help, please do so. Please find a therapist or a group where yeah, you feel less lonely. This is also something that can help and it's so okay to do so because yeah, talking to someone, sharing your innermost feelings is so valuable. So please get the help if you feel like you need in this moment, in future moments and just be safe, queen. So this was a very long video, I know, but I really wanted to talk about that because I feel like nowadays we only see most of the time the glittery and the perfect side of being a witch on the internet. And I'm not saying that to talk about bad of any creator, I'm guilty of that myself because I just love sharing the positive things of being a witch. I love to share my beautiful altar right but there is just so much more to being a witch as i said it is a constant inner development it is constantly doing the healing work the shadow work there is just so much more to being a witch than doing the external work right so walking the path of a witch is so much internal work and healing whether you do that consciously or not but yeah, I really hope this video was helpful for you and thank you so much for watching until the very end. If the video was helpful, please don't forget to do the YouTube magic. It really helps me out so much. So subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, like this video, comment down below, share it to someone who may need to hear this message today. And yeah, I also made a video about why I could not survive society without whimsy. I will put it right here. You can go ahead and watch it after this one. And we will hang out again next week. So I hope you have a good week and see you then. Bye bye.